Hey, good morning and welcome to Hump Day. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and happy Wednesday, a glorious day here in the Valley of the Sun, and I hope it finds you well. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. Of course, wealth insurance is what we do. Legal, lawful, constitutional, heck, even biblical tender, something that has been money for thousands of years. You know, the question that we always raise is, it's not how much money you have in your portfolio, well, at least fiat money. How much does it weigh? Being diversified in a world uh, that's absolutely lost its mind. Right, you sit there. I mean, I don't know if you tried. I tried to watch the Democratic debate. I did. I, I mean, I tried hard. I probably made maybe 20 minutes, I, and I couldn't listen anymore. The, and here's the problem. Half the people agree with those people. Right? We are a nation divided. Uh, we, we have just all, really ridiculous things happening Financially, And that's kind of what we talk about and specialize here. Be diversified. Uh, I don't know how many other ways that I always tell you, don't put all your money into gold and silver. Uh, same way, like if all as you have is a 401k or an IRA or an annuity or, or some type of money market paper investment, you're foolish, period. You're a fool. And you know it. The problem is, when you try to talk to your financial planner, how many of you out there listening have said to your financial planner, if you have one, <laughs> I know a lot of you out there like, I wish I had a financial planner. That would actually mean I had some finances to plan for. I get it. But the ones of you that do, how many of you have said to your financial planner, you know what, I want to take some of this and I want to buy gold. What have they said to you? I promise you 99.9999% of them told you you were dumb, that you're an idiot. And maybe, listen, and I know for a fact some of them say just like that, actually will insult you. And, and I find it funny. You know what most people do? They take it. That'd be the last day that financial planner had my money. The day he insults me. Right? Like, you think he knows better? He doesn't know better. Believe me, he doesn't. If you listen to this show, you're more educated than that financial planner is. I promise you that. But I'm not telling you to take it all out. And, and listen... I, I will say this very, very clearly. That is your financial well-being, not his. But they'll act like it's theirs. That'll tell you all you need to know. right? And he'll tell you what a horrible mistake they're making, what an idiot you are, blah, blah. You know all the things, and you know he's wrong. And being diversified is the best thing anybody could do. And, and I hope, I hope you're smart enough to figure it out and understand what's real and what isn't. Do you know that yesterday QE4 started? Did you? Sure did. Right now the, the Federal Reserve is back buying debt again. Why? Because we have liquidity problems. Guess what else happened yesterday? You know those repo auctions that they don't want to talk about on the TV? There's nobody. Everybody wants to pretend that, that it's not a problem. Oh, how wrong. And I love it when you hear, there's no warnings. Oh, we don't see any trouble. Everything's wonderful and great. I said, I don't want to say that things aren't horrible. That's why I tell you, be diversified. But please don't be ignorant, right? Because things aren't horrible doesn't mean you, you have uh, that you can be ignorant. Here's the problem. 
this rate cutting thing really isn't working anymore, is it? Right, we've had two more rate cuts, and everyone's talking about is there going to be a, there'll be another one before the end of the year. Believe me on that. It's not really helping. Not really helping at all. This morning, the seventy-five billion dollar a day repo market all of a sudden was oversubscribed again. Yep, they went a couple of weeks where, you know, it got better for a couple of weeks. Where the banks only needed, you know, 35, 40, 50 billion dollars of cash. Today it jumps back up to 80 billion. The central bank bought 7.5 billion dollars worth of treasury notes today. By the way, all of them very short term. So now it looks like the Fed is trying to drive down short-term rates, right? They, that whole yield curve inversion thing, right? They want to get that that thing away. They want to keep uh, buying on the short end. Uh, and again, all of the things that we talk about, it's already been decided. I wish I was giving you some great knowledge ahead of time. Where do we go from here? It's already been decided. I know this. It's not with me on money. That's a fact. Major Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh yesterday at the very end of the show. Uh, we had a deal that came in late, um, and I I was able to uh, procure twenty dollar liberties. Uh, gold is up almost ten bucks today. Whatever happened yesterday, forget about. It. We actually got real data today, and gold's back up. They they want to hammer gold. Listen, they want gold to be lower because they want to believe the BS they're trying to peddle. Right now, here's the funny thing uh, uh, about. Americans in general? Is it me? Or has people's emotional intelligence just really gone into the crapper? You know, that, and I say a lot of times, right, a lot of times I think the most successful people, you know, some people call it common sense. Uh, I like to refer to it as emotional intelligence, right? You know when you're getting bs Right? It's the same thing like with these financial planners telling you what a moron you are for actually wanting to be diversified. Like every central bank on the planet isn't doing it. Why do you think that is? Because like I just I said in the last week, listen, they've already decided. I, I believe, is it some electronic currency of some sort? Yes. Yep. Right? It's not going to be in a marrow. Right, it, 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 but it's going to be an electronic version because again, they need everything to be in the system. Right, having something not in the paper markets really makes good sense right now. Right, think about the paper markets. Federal Reserve. We not only are they got QE going again. Right, which why would you really you're that naive, you're you're that full of your own phony baloney, you got your head that far up your backside. I mean they just started selling the balance sheet like a year ago. And now all of a sudden, well, whoops. <laughs> what happened? You're supposed to sell like one point five trillion, two trillion dollars of it. What happened? What happened to your great mathematical formulas and all your great pronost- you know, pronostications and your forecast and all that stuff? It's not worth the paper it's printed on, folks. And when you sit there and, and you really start to understand, right, that's a sign. Right? $80 billion dollars of liquidity needed by the banks today. The central banks are only offering 75 billion. Right? Why is it open? 
Right? They only opened these windows in emergencies. Where's the emergency? Where's the fire? Why are you buying bonds again, right? Here we are. We laugh. Oh, yeah, well, Europe's still buying bonds. Japan's buying their own bonds. But not us. No, no, America's great. That's, that's what they tell you. Right? And we want to have that warm fuzzy. Right? Everybody have a warm little fuzzy. Because these central banks are so smart. They don't even know what's happening. And they talk about tools in their tool kit. Right? You know what that means? They just make it up. Yeah, I mean, no, don't get me wrong. It's not like they're taking a, a, a complete guess, but it's an educated guess. They're not really sure what's going to happen. But here's what you know, right? And we're back to emotional intelligence, i.e. common sense. Having all your money in those paper markets, is it really that safe right now? Right? If every single day they have banks line up to get liquidity every day now all of a sudden we just started QE4 again we just ended quantitative tightening not even 90 days ago then they're back that's not good that's not what was supposed to happen why is it happening? And of course, oh no, everything's fine. And the, the consumer this and the consumer that. I don't know if you saw retail sales this morning. Did you see it? Probably not. Normally, boy, let me tell you, if retail sales was good today, you would have seen it. Retail sales down in the month of September. Right down in the month of September. The almighty consumer starting to show what? Hey, things are getting a little tougher. I mean, we know this. Everybody knows. Right? We, we've got issues with trade. We've got, look at the freight indexes. Rail car, boat, you name it. it, it all forms of delivery down. And, and now we're starting to see it translate into all the hard data. And you're telling me you don't have enough emotional intelligence to figure out what's happening? Really? So yesterday, like I said, late in the show, we I got an email on a deal uh, on $20 Liberties. And I ran them at $1,525. And remember, gold was down yesterday for no reason other than they wanted it to be down. Of course, now gold uh, sitting here right four, fourteen hundred and ninety. Okay, fourteen ninety gold pretty much taking it all back. Yes, I know it's still below fifteen hundred, which is good for you. Going to keep it the same at fourteen and a quarter. You're going to be buying twenty dollar liberties at thirty. Five dollars over spot. Tell you what I'm going to do because this is how important today is. Buy ten or more, take another five bucks off, and buy it at fifteen twenty, at thirty dollars over, at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And just to be clear, buying gold from your financial planner is not buying physical gold. Buying gold in an ETF, you don't own the metal. You're part of the paper Ponzi scheme, whether you like it or not. The only way to buy and own physical gold not to be in is to buy it from a dealer like me. And I hope that you buy it from me, 800-951-0592. A little emotional intelligence is all you need to know that today is a great day uh, to be back. Not be a great day. 
it's a great price right and remember our philosophy here for all of you listening there's only one way you go 23 years without a complaint that's right you heard me right and this is an era you know how it is Everybody's got their cell phones. Everybody, everybody can fire off anonymous emails. They do it all the time. Right? Because we do exactly what we say we're going to do. We don't play games here. Listen, I don't have... I could. I'd be smarter probably to have 20 or 30 people in a phone room making outbound calls, telling you to call me for free reports. Right, get some some retired actor, washed up actor to be my spokesperson, or or pay a I don't know Bill O'Reilly or Glenn Beck a bunch of money to hawk my gold and rip people off. So what? I got a bunch of complaints. Big deal. Every couple of years, I'll just change the name of my company, right? File different LLC paperwork, get a different phone number, do it all over again. Or you can deal with somebody like us. 23 years, the exact same phone number. AllAmericaGold.com has been our website since we created the website. Which, then, the website's been around longer than I've worked here. And it's because we don't play games. 1525, when you call up, all you do is you say, I want the special. There's no bait and switch. I'm not going to tell you how many times have you called the dealer on a special like the guys on TV. Buy gold at cost! That emotional intelligence that I keep talking about. It's amazing how many people have a broken emotional intelligence. You know that's not true. You can't buy stuff at cost. That'd be great. Right? Obviously, they, they, that company won't be in business very long. But what they what do they want you to do? They want to get your phone number. They want your address. Then they're going to tell you, you don't want that. No, no, you want this other thing, right? The old bait and switch thing. We don't do any of that. Just call up. You tell Arlene, I want the special. And you know what our big sales pitch is going to be? How many would you like? I want one. Or I want ten. Right, you get 10, you save 5 bucks a coin, buy 10. Right? That's it. I mean, if you're a new customer, obviously we need your name and address. We've got offices here in Phoenix, in the Deer Valley Airport. Uh, we got an office in Johnstown, Colorado, just north of Denver. Right? So if you want to pick up, great. You don't have to pay any shipping. We charge $35 to ship. We ship registered, insured U.S. mail. Like I said, 23, we're going on 24 years. Nobody has ever not getting product from us, ever. It's never happened. Everybody's been delivered. 23 years plus. Registered, insured, U.S. mail. It's just expensive. I know it's... Uh, when I first started here, I think uh, Eric and I were talking about this the other day. I think it was $12, $10 or $12. I think maybe it was 10 and went... Within the first 30 days, I think we raised it to 12. It's now 35. And on 35, I ship two rolls of Silver Eagles. I lose money. But we ship registered, insured U.S. mail. We take all forms, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. That's hard to do in the gold industry, by the way. Credit card companies, you got to jump through a lot of hoops. you got to be a really good dealer to be taking them on. We take all four major credit cards we do charge two percent we kind of split because all of you use those reward cards but trust me when i tell you the the the, the two percent i charge you i'm still losing but i understand you want to get your points and your miles and all that stuff so we take visa mastercard american express discover card personal check is the you know the way most people do it uh, if you want to come into our offices and pay for pay cash and take your product with you, you can do that as well. 800-951-0592. As I was saying before, uh, the consumer slowed down in the month of September. Retail sell, uh, sales fell three-tenths of a percent. It is the first 
declined since February. Uh, the control group, now I see that always, the central bank, you think, hey, let's just take the number. <laughs> no, 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 no. We like a number inside the number. We call it the control group. Again, why? Because usually it's the best number for them. But even the uh, controlled group, which they say is more reliable. Why do they say it's more reliable? Well, because it helps them. Uh, was, was little changed. It, it didn't grow at all. It was that flat, dead flat. So even the control group uh, missed expectations as well. Uh, Health care and personal care costs was up. Furniture, home furnishings was up. Miscellaneous was up. And they said food service barely up. Motor vehicles down. Building materials down. Gas stations down. Sporting goods, hobbies down. General merchandise down. Non-store retails down. I guess we didn't have the big RV sales. Remember that one from a, what was that, a, a quarter ago? Patriot Radio News Hour. Call us. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Millions of students headed back to school this fall seeking to acquire the knowledge and skills they need for a successful life. Many teachers enter the profession with a mission to inspire young people towards excellence and personal growth. But for thousands of school administrators and other non-teaching personnel who draw big salaries in our public schools, the new academic year has a very different meaning. In the education establishment, the new school year is a time to indoctrinate young people with manufactured notions of diversity, oppression, social justice, and the canons of political correctness. Nowhere was this better illustrated than the firestorm that blazed in California just before the school year started. A new statewide curriculum for ethnic studies was posted for public comment and the deafening uproar from parents and even politicians was enough to cause a postponement of its implementation. In 2016, California passed a law requiring the development of an ethnic studies curriculum (laughs) as though that were a legitimate academic subject. Listen to this. The curriculum is required to quote, include information on the ethnic studies movement, specifically the Third World Liberation Front and its significance in the establishment of ethnic studies as a discipline and work in promoting diversity and inclusion within higher education, end quote. The curriculum is supposed to, wait for it, quote, promote critical thinking and rigorous analysis of history, systems of oppression, and the status quo in an effort to generate discussions on futurity and imagine new possibilities, end quote. But the futurity to discuss is not one of capitalism, freedom, and prosperity, No, the proposed new curriculum is loaded with liberal jargon and describes capitalism as a form of power and oppression. In reality, capitalism has brought higher standards of living to people of all ethnicities, but students in California would be taught the opposite. A torrent of opposition to this new curriculum has caused its supporters to delay it. Some look to private schools, homeschooling, and charter schools as a way to escape this new indoctrination. Join us tomorrow for more details about bringing this ludicrous curriculum requirement to a grinding halt. Parents and the public are changing policy from the ground up. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. The liberal agenda is corrupting classrooms in colleges and schools across the country. If you're a parent, teacher, or administrator who really cares about our children, we promise to keep you informed at phyllisschlafly.com. And let us hear from you at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us again next time for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour, uh, U.S. $20 gold pieces. Man, the just gets better. Uh, gold's up uh, 10 14 91 uh, $20 liberties at fifteen twenty-five. Buy 10 or more at fifteen twenty at 800 592 So we've got we've been hit by the triple whammy. We got bad retail sales. Uh, the repo uh, overnight fed window oversubscribed. 
uh, which meant uh, back this liquidity crisis all of a sudden back. Here's what's funny. It's not the end of the quarter. I thought it was just for, oh, well, they got to pay their taxes and they need a little extra liquidity. Uh Uh-uh. I remember. Remember when they first did it, the emergency they did, which was, what, about a month ago? And they were doing it day to day. Oh, well, we'll we'll let you know uh, at the end of the day if we'll do one tomorrow because this isn't going to last real long. That's what they said. And then they, after like three days, they're like, okay, well, we're going to do it for the next two weeks. And then about three days after that, oh, well, you know what? We're going to do it through November. And then about a week after that, hey, we're going to do this through January. It's never going to end. Well, it'll end. It will end whenever that new system comes in. Boy, I hope you got a lot of gold when, before that happens. I really do. And then, of course, QE4 started yesterday buying all short-term. Everything was a year or less uh, that they're buying $7.5 billion. Uh, they're going to spend, they're saying $60 billion a month. My guess is, right, let's, give it, let's give it a couple of weeks and see if there's an adjustment. Uh, I'll say this, it won't be lower. If there's an adjustment, it's going to be higher. Uh, and, and by this time next year, we're going to be talking about a Fed balance sheet. Uh, that's what we're probably approaching, what, I don't know, $5 trillion, if not more. Capital, they're a hedge fund. Just filed for bankruptcy protection this morning. Uh, they, they say that the fund describes itself. This is what I love. Let me tell you how they describe themselves. A diverse investment platform serving both institutional and retail investors worldwide. Yes, in addition to high-yield credit, Highland investable uh, investment capabilities include public equity, real estate, private equity, special situations. Yeah, I don't know what those are, but they, it's on their website. Structured credit. And sectors and region that verticals built around specialized teams. Yeah, they're out of business. Uh, $1.7 billion of U.S. stock was held by these guys as of June 30th. Whoops. Like I said, the stock market really hasn't done much. And if you, you know, outside of a handful of companies, if you don't have them, it's been a tough couple of years. Uh, and then this one. See, when you're not a bank, this is what happens when you don't when you run out of liquidity. For the first time, first it was the shocking junk bond market fiasco. Uh, they're talking about all these things that, that are happening all over the world. In South Korea. The, the country's largest, I want to make sure I get this right, yes, South Korea's largest hedge fund is now halting redemptions because of a lack of liquidity. See, hedge funds aren't banks. So they, they can't go to the Federal Reserve window and borrow money and say, hey, I got this debt I bought, let's take a trade. But you know what they can do? They can stop you from taking your money. Now, I know you're like, well, that's South Korea. But but you, you, you see that what happens everywhere else eventually gets everywhere, doesn't it? Because all these central, they've tied it all together. It's like, like uh, again, they, right, they want to get rid of borders. They want to get rid of, like, they hate the America first thing, right? They can't stand it. They, they want... Uh, you know, to, to eliminate all the borders in one world order and all, all of those things. But So think about today. We had one hedge fund just flat out file bankruptcy, right? And as a Jew, I, you know what's funny? That was just the U.S. stock they own. They won't say, uh, I don't have any of the others. Uh, now South Korea's largest hedge fund is denying redemptions. Uh, they say that the hedge fund with about four billion 
dollars in assets suspended withdrawals of any more funds as of Monday freezing a total of 710 million dollars of its portfolio after the firm said last week it couldn't sell assets fast enough to meet redemptions let me let me tell you what that means we can't sell them fast enough uh, we got these things. I know you may have never heard of them before. They're called computers. Yeah, I mean, they do like, I don't even know, a couple billion transactions per second. <laughs> That's probably, and I probably way off, it's probably more than that. What they're saying is, uh, we can't sell these because one, nobody wants to buy it. Two, nobody wants to buy it at the price we need to sell it for to say that we're still a solvent company, right? Those are really the two issues. They, they, they can't go to the Fed window and add them this stuff and say, hey, buy this from me, right? There are no buyers. Well, and I shouldn't say that. There always is a buyer. There's a price. There's a price. The problem is the price would make these hedge funds be insolvent. And we're seeing it everywhere and again. Every, oh, no, every, everything's great. No, no, it's fine. Is it? Does that sound fine to you? Now, of course, I know you didn't see it on the TV. I know, right? Because you, you know if you, want, if you want the truth, that's where you go. Come on. Right? You know the last place to go to get the truth would be on your television set. It's called the idiot box for a reason. Anybody that believe if you believe anything that comes out of that, again, that emotional intelligence. I don't know. They're, somehow they, they've broken it, haven't they? I know. More good news if we get back. 800 The uh, Man, this is probably the best price as far as close to, to spot as possible, right? And again, things that we love here at Patriot Trading Group, right? Buying as close to spot as possible. It's huge. Buying the right product. In other words... When I buy it, it's one thing. What about when I sell it? What uh, trade it? What are right? We want you to be able to stay as private as possible, right? Don't buy things that when you go to sell them back, you've got to fill out a ten ninety nine for. Right here, when you you buy the old U.S. twenties, part of why you know in the United States it makes sense to buy U.S. minted materials. You can buy these twenties. Sell these twenties, trade these twenties, and I don't. And I'm not required to do anything. You could come in today and sell a hundred thousand dollars worth of twenty dollar gold pieces. I'd write you a check and say, "Have a nice day." Right, and 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 that's that's kind of what we're all about here. So this is the 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 best item at the best price twenty dollar liberties fifteen twenty five buy ten or more down to fifteen twenty you got gold at fourteen ninety one fourteen ninety two at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two GM looks like we may have a, a, a an end of the strike well put it maybe something to vote on we don't know. Uh, details are shaky, but they're saying that they've reached a, a an understanding uh, that uh, maybe something that will be put together uh, by tomorrow. No word on whether or not the union will go back to work before actually voting on the deal. Uh, if they go back to work uh, before the vote, we could see GM workers back to work on Monday. If they want to wait until after the vote, well, then it's still a couple of more weeks. So I guess uh, it's going to take some time, which, you know, makes sense, right? you got to actually read it. 
unlike Congress, where apparently you don't need to read anything. You pass the bill uh, before you know what's in the bill. Uh, General Motors in, in the, the, what, it's been a month, month plus, going over a month now, uh, where General Motors uh, has stopped making cars. They, they have a something in place. I don't know if it's a deal yet or not, uh, but they're getting closer there. I mean, eventually you got to start making cars again. Right? Like, that just tells you, man, how many cars did they really have? Right? If, I mean, if you can go over a month without making a single vehicle, uh, how many cars are really out there? That's why I said these car sales, uh, again, September car sales were soft again. Uh, and then China trade news. And, and man, I want to be with the president here. But I, we're starting to get more details. Not quite what it seems. Matter of fact, people are starting to worry there may not be a deal. But let me tell you what we've we, what we've learned. This forty to fifty billion dollars of agriculture. Remember yesterday? Uh, maybe it was two days ago. I'm like, man, I don't think that's possible. That they could buy that much food in one year, and that our farmers could, you know, have that much food made. I mean, we could ramp up to it. Uh, That wasn't the deal. So according to, uh, and this has been Bloomberg, Reuters, CNBC, the 40 to $50 billion of agricultural purchases was to take place for uh, in a time period of less than two years. So I don't know, what, what are we... 23 months, right? Because, you know, right now, they, China was buying before the whole tariff thing around $20 billion worth of food. So let's use $50 billion because $40 billion really wouldn't be an increase at all. Uh, and, and then saying just less than two years. How much less? That part, uh, very vague. Uh, and then the other part that got people worried is China said, yeah, that's kind of the deal. But we're not buying any food until all the concessions we, we, we didn't. We're not just buying the food. Let's put it that way. There's a bunch of concessions the United States needs to make before we're going to buy the food. They won't say what they are. Uh, so anyway, the fifty billion in, in China kind of said forty to fifty. Of course, we're using fifty, less than two years to do it, and then oh by the way, uh, we expect stuff in return. No mention, by the way, of this finance thing from China. You know, remember I told you uh, one of the ways forward would be, you know, our banking, our bankers get something, right? If our bankers get something, right, then miraculously somehow we can get a deal. Rumors were speculating that our financial institutions, at least some of them, may not have to have a joint partner to deal to do business in China. China's not actually saying that was part of the deal today. So uh, all of those things playing a factor. Got gold gold really moving up, though, on the retail sales number, uh, coming in much less than expected. On the good side, we, General Motors, that strike may finally be coming to an end. Uh, and, and if there's more to that, I'll let you know right now the Dow is down off of its lows because of the GM news, but the Dow is down about 25 points. The S&P is down 7. The Nasdaq's down 30 plus. Uh, gold's up a 10 spot. Silver's gone positive as well. Now silver approaching uh, $17.50 once again. 800 592 covered remember just use common sense here be smart right we've got a dow that you know dow's at twenty seven thousand in in 10 right now twenty seven thousand and ten in december of 2017 the dow was twenty six thousand eight hundred 
right? So the last two years, we've had some movement. But at the end of the day, the Dow really hasn't done anything. It's gotten more expensive. Uh, we're just in the in the early stages of earning seasons, and they're putting a, be- a great spin. Uh, oh no, hey, you know it's better than expected. They're not great. Not a lot of huge beats out there. And remember, all of these earnings non-GAAP, which is one of the things they promised us. And wouldn't you think? Wouldn't they care enough? You know, you think about. How many people in the country have 401ks? 100 million? I, I don't know the number, but I'm just throwing a number out. A lot, right? I mean, this is really the main way you save for retirement in America now. Wouldn't you think they would want the companies that we're lending our wealth to? Because remember, when you're you're four one, you're lending that money out. And by the way, you're lending it kind of the same way when you put it into the bank. Isn't it funny? We're unsecured in all of it. They go bankrupt, we get nothing. Right? We're last in line when the redemptions come. All that stuff. It makes no sense. But wouldn't you think that they would say, "Hey, you've got to use generally." accepted accounting principles. I don't even know why it's got to be generally. Shouldn't they all be, hey, here's the requirements for you to report. Are you making money, yes or no? Not are you making money if you don't count this and you don't count that and you, and we didn't pay the pensions and we didn't do this and we didn't do that. And well, you know what? If I don't count all those things, then I make money. Should it be that way? Of course not. But again, this is why, remember, when you got older, you weren't supposed to buy stocks anymore. Because <laughs> they do, hey, man, it's a risky deal. And again, another one of the emotional intelligence factors, look at the P.E. ratios. Yes, it's not quite the dot-com era, but it's right next to it. Right? Not quite that, I but right next to it. We all know what happened. We, we see this and, and these patterns and all of these things when, when, when these P.E. ratios spike up they stay there for a while but when the good times end, right, they always go back to the means and that's a painful proposition. That's why you always be diversified have some gold be smart use your emotional intelligence don't let your financial planner bully you and if he does leave them. Go to another one. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. Do your research. Find out it's your money. Act like it. Be your own central bank. It's the best advice I can give you. 800 Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back tomorrow.